cannot give you back your homes or restore your dead to life, but perhaps I can give you justice in the name of our king. When we think about the ending of Game of Thrones, we usually settle on a world that is either obliterated from the war with the White Walkers or possibly overrun by the dead. We talk about Jon Snow or Daenerys being the only one left at the end of everything, like we see in a vision of Dany's in the House of the Undying. A throne that means nothing, that rules nothing, because greed and power swallowed Westeros whole, leaving nothing left for a conqueror to claim. Regardless of the bittersweet ending and what will come of it, there is one thing that seems definite. Someone or something will be left standing. But what or who? The White Walkers could win the coming war, leaving only a non-stop winter to engulf the land. And while this could very well be the grand finale, I think George R.R. R. Martin would have some humans still around, either starting a new civilization and rebuilding, or something similar to it. So with that being said, I would like to throw my money on the one character who has had the most success in not only surviving the current timeline, but also manipulating huge parts of the game. Varys, the spider, the master of whispers, the one person who has not only been playing the Game of Thrones, but is also not blinded in some capacity by an outside force or obsession. The biggest players right now are Varys, Tyrion, Peter Baelish, and I guess Cersei if you want to throw her name in the hat although she just has no remorse for the consequences of her actions. That is why she has made it this far, while others would rather prefer staying out of the spotlight. Oh, and the Faceless Men, the Iron Bank, Melisandre, the Maesters, and other small groups are really great players too, when you talk about kind of behind the scenes work, but the main story doesn't give as much focus on them and their schemes. Anyway, when analyzing Varys and his actions, he seems to make decisions and carry out his agenda flawlessly without much negative feedback. In Season 1, when Varys said to Ned that he serves the realm, it may have just been the most honest thing we have heard from his character. He is not sidetracked by love, like both Tyrion and Littlefinger have been, and maybe still are. He is really not ever flaunting his mastery of manipulation either. He sits back and pulls the strings quietly, without painting a target on his back. Varys is simply playing a level of the game that is so far above the other main players, others don't even consider him a threat. He advised the Mad King Aerys Targaryen, and during Robert's rebellion against the Lannisters, he asked the king to not open the gates of King's Landing to Tywin. However, Aerys went against the spider's advisement, which in turn allowed for Tywin to sack the city. Varys even warned Aerys that Rhaegar might have been trying to gather powerful lords to unseat his rule of Westeros at the tourney of Harrenhal, and then Varys served King Robert for his rule, and Joffrey's. And then we learned that his true allegiance was always with the Targaryens. In the books, he claimed that he switched baby Aegon, Rhaegar and Elia Martell's son, with a peasant's baby before the sack of King's Landing, and that he smuggled the child to Essos to be raised as a true Targaryen king to later contest the throne. He supports Danny's claim to power currently, as it seems, but in comparison to her father, Varys acted very supportive of the Mad King's reign, and even pitted Ares against Rhaegar, his own son. So if Varys is truly a Targaryen supporter, does he only support certain members of the family, like Ares over Rhaegar, and what are his truest intentions for Daenerys? It has been said that Varys despises all magic now because of his experience as a child when he was sold to a sorcerer. It seems a little weird that the Master of Whispers is openly supporting the woman with three dragons. Either way, Varys has not done scheming, just like Tyrion is not done drinking, and just like Grey Worm is not done admiring Masande. Let me know your thoughts on our favorite spy master. Thanks for watching everyone, have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow.